And when I met Vivek in college, it had been a year of a lot of social upheaval in Delhi. It was the year Mrs. Gandhi was assassinated. There was a lot of breakdown in society that we saw at that time. And uh, we decided that if we didn't leave Delhi at that point, we probably would get sucked into the system. Of course, we were two very young people and it was a big dream. But Vivek was quite happy to support me in uh, making that dream come as true as we could. And uh, by some fluke and uh, luck, we found this beautiful place. In the year 1985, long before organic farming entered the mainstream vocabulary, long before sustainable living became a fashion, the young couple, Julie and Vivek, decided to tap out of their metro life, pack their bags and leave for HD Kote, 50 kilometers south of Mysore, a remote area in the middle of tribal settlements back then. They wanted to create their own little world. This is how Krakadona was born. Well, when we came here, this was after a year of drought. So the river you see there, which is now full, was just a trickle that you could jump over. The roads were pathetic. Uh, we had three or four buses, and there was no health care or anything in the vicinity. You had to go to town. No phones, obviously, no power. But we had each other, and we had... Uh, and an open mind, so we, we learned, and the soil taught us. Julie and Vivek had a broad idea of what they wanted, but had no knowledge on how to go about it. They also did not have references or examples from India that they could rely upon. Vivek and Julie divided the land based on soil types and the gradient of the land. The eastern part was designated for horticulture and the western region for food crops. The hilly terrain of the land was left to regenerate and be reclaimed by birds and animals. The first tree we planted was that banyan tree that is uh, behind a house. It's now a massive big uh, banyan tree. Then we planted the coconuts and I think uh, the first crop we planted was cowpea and uh, watermelon and banana. For me it was the first vegetables. Mm. We didn't know head or tail of how to sow the seeds. We put it in too thick, but those little baby carrots were the most divine food <laughs> that I ever ate, you know, the, that I could actually pick up. I didn't have to wash it or anything. I could just eat it off the, out of the ground, you know, like as is. I, it was just so magical. The initial days were trying for the couple. The crops were attacked by insects and pests, but they were not ready to give up. Vivek and Julie tapped into the agricultural wisdom of the local community to find creative solutions so that they could avoid chemical pesticides. Even a hardy millet crop like ragi, we used to get those aphids and those uh, sucking pests and all that. So what we used to do that time was, we would cook white rice the night before and make it into curd rice. Early morning, we would come and chuck it in the fields. Early morning. Because there was a tradition here that in one rain, in the ragi field, you have to chuck this white rice. Okay. So we sat and we watched what happens. And since you see, we, we are in a valley and on a riverside, so there, there's a lot of bird life. Birds come to eat the rice, then they start eating the pests and the bugs and the aphids and all that are on the, the ragi plant. So there you are getting in predators for a pest that you don't want to spray pesticide for. Today, after 37 years, and countless losses and adventures, they have a farm that is spread over an area of 35 acres. They produce almost everything they need for their daily life. Paddy, millets, oil seeds, 
eggs, spices, sugarcane and vegetables, just to name a few. Julie and Vivek have two sons, a daughter and a daughter-in-law. They also have three dogs, two cats, 15 cattle, 20 goats, over 60 chickens and a cacophony of wild birds for company. Today, we would say in terms of fruits, we have a huge variety. Uh, minor fruits, traditional fruits, also like the mango, the coconut and all that. Food crops, I would say we are doing anywhere between 16 to 18 types of food crops here now. There was a time we were doing more than 30 different food crops, yes. And this also goes into spices, um, oil seeds, grains, pulses, uh, eggs from the chickens, milk from the cows. Everything, the entire food basket. Everything. Julie and Vivek didn't just want to create a farm. They wanted to create a community that can think and live freely. They involved the local community on the farm and homeschooled their children and were the first to start a farmer's market in Mysore. Yeah, when you were kids, mum and dad they basically sat us down and asked us, do you want to go to school or do you want to stay at home and learn? My sister opted to uh, go out. I always wanted to be a person who took care of the land. I always knew that, yeah, I do want to, I do want to go out and explore. This is where I'm always going to come back to. Basically, mom and dad taught us things like basic math, a uh, little bit of pointers on history, some biology, some geography. Then after that, after picking up a little bit of it, grammar, this, that, all that, and then whatever inspired us or whatever our, what really interested us, we would pursue that and study up on that more. Today, Vivek and Julie are involved in helping mitigate rural problems through activism and policy. The couple is trying to help the community farm responsibly and has opened the farm to students who are eager to learn. Vivek and Julie can only smile when they look back and reminisce about the wonderful adventure they embarked upon. This is their life. I think I said earlier, no? We came to find hope, and I think we did. Hmm. And that is what we are handing over to our children. A little bit more hopeful world to live a life. It's a great life. <laughs>